Hi everyone, my name is Ludwig Kubula and I'm from the University of the Free State, currently studying my Bachelor's in Information Technology. So today uh, I'm here with one of my book club members. Um, I would like her to introduce herself. Hi guys, my name is Balungi Lemaloga and I am a student at the UFS. I'm currently studying a diploma in Great Art Teaching and I'm also part of the book club. We are going to be discussing and reviewing a book. We will be doing these reviews every single month. And this, this month's theme is about the youth. It's also in light of Africa Month that we had last, last month. So the book that we will be reviewing today is written by Dr. Lloyd Magangen. Mm -hmm. And the book is called I Am Black and I Am On Track. The author told us that the book was mainly written to solve a problem. So if you guys want to find out what problem does he wants to solve, please listen in as we go through a few questions that I will be asking Balungile. So the first question is Balungile. What is the theme of the book? Um, the theme of the book is about enlightening the youth and enlightening us as Africans to free ourselves from psychological slavery and also to know your history, to know where you come from, to know your roots as an African person. So that, because one thing I feel like, whenever you know where you come from, you'll definitely know where to head on and how to do other things mm -hmm. as you move forward in, in life. So it's more about self-acknowledgement and like, having to realize the power that you possess as a person, as an individual and as part of the human race, not necessarily classifying it as black or white. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a lot about self-discovery as being a black person, if I can put it that way. Yeah, it's more about being, it's about self-discovery, being a black, being an African person and also knowing where you come from. Okay. I feel like that's the highlight of the book to like know where you come from and other people who have made it throughout who are still African. Mm -hmm. But some, most of them, they're not much recognized or most talked about people. Hence, like we have uh, the youth today not knowing where they come from or not knowing who to look up to, if I may mm -hmm. say. So I feel like it, 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 it helps with finding out who are these people and it gives you the desire to find more people who are black, who did things and who, who, are, who are successful in a way. I feel like that's how as young people we can also have um, role models, people we look up to. Okay. Yeah. So th my second question is, what is the style that the author uses in the book? Like, is it very informative? Does it make you think as well as this? Does it make, like, does, is it engaging? He is very engaging. And mm -hmm. number two, he is also informative. He talked about, like, personal experiences of people who, who were African and how we actually introduced to the society or to the whole world, mm -hmm. you see. So, because most of the time, when you start talking about an African person, what comes to other people's minds? It's slavery. We are psychologically affected by the whole slavery thing because we now live and dwell on, on certain things. Mm -hmm. Be like, no, it's fine. No one has ever been there. But are you sure about it? So he's very informative as well. And most of the things he talked about, they are that provoking. Mm -hmm. uh, how does he? How does the author engage with the, with the readers in the book? For me, because I read the book, I felt like he he was engaging with me. It gets to a point where you feel the need to do something about yourself, to do something about your life. So you you are like directly engaging to me, mm -hmm. and addressing things that I was that I was not even aware of. So with the information that you've given me, I now have to process it and apply it to my everyday life mm. and actually check like the potential and the ambition that I have as 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 a as a student, as part of the youth 
and as a South African, as a young South African, especially with the current state of how our country is right now. Mm-hmm. So I felt like he was very engaging. And Did I answer your question? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. The next question I want to ask you, or, or I would like to also kind of give a little bit of input mm-hmm. on the informative part. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I was reading the book, mm-hmm. I also realized that it tells you that our history does not start at slavery. Mm-hmm. And personally, I didn't know that. And I learned in the book, mm-hmm. like, actually, there is history to us. Like, because mm-hmm. cause, cause I'm black, yes. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know my history like that. And actually reading the book, it it informed me about a lot of things that mm-hmm. I never thought about or... I was very ignorant, mm-hmm. I would say. Mm-hmm. When I read the book, I actually realized that I was really very ignorant as a Same, black yeah. person. Yeah. So the next question I want to ask you is, okay. how does the author explore the experiences of being black in the book? Okay, I, on that one, does this other character I found is George Washington Carver. Mm-hmm. Um, with his story, like it gives the it give it gives like the narrative of how we are perceived as black people. Every time he was born into slavery and like he was deprived of education, he could not do like anything except for you being a slave and just keep on working, being wept like the all the emotional trauma and the 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 whole problems they, they faced during the slavery period. Mm-hmm. So with us because like even if when 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 we are introduced or like when you talk about being a black person especially with racism as well as like it's a social problem in our country so it always have gives you the, like the perception of how other people view us as black people we are actually introduced like we are put inferior under other people like it's always like the bottom people like we are just here mm-hmm. you see so that's how I feel like he explored the experiences of being black, how disadvantaged we were. And mind you, you came to me with my knowledge, with my resources, and you invaded my space. Then I had to work for you. So whatever you're going to teach your kids is that they are supposed to work for you. They are supposed to submit to you. That's how I felt. Jorge. The, the book is just setting the whole thing like that. That as a black person, you, we lead, the, as black people, we follow. So mm-hmm. that's how, like, they explored the experiences of being black. And that's currently, like, how it mostly applies in the state of how we are as a nation okay. right now. It's youth month, mm-hmm. uh, this month. Mm-hmm. What did you experience? What, what were your experiences as, as a youth uh, in terms of the black experience? Like what particular experiences would you say with um, what you just being said about lead, on the lead and the being opinion. underneath mm-hmm. or always having to follow? Where did you did you see yourself in in situations like that where you ha- where you were always following as as a youth member? No, honestly speaking, I have never been in a situation whereby I had to like follow and do other things. But one thing I can assure you with our generation is. As much as like I I have mentioned that it has affected us psychologically, mm-hmm. I feel like um it's something that like Rona as ourselves, like we tend to to look down upon ourselves. Like we, we don't see ourselves having the courage, having to be brave, having to stand there on the line because of that's how maybe maybe things in the township or like that's how it's like it's like we are just programmed to believe that you're supposed to be working, you're supposed to be doing this, you're supposed to be following a certain manner. I think I meant it in a metaphoric way. So basically, meaning that um, with with how other like with with the the just being an African and being a South African as mm-hmm. well, we we don't see that in ourselves. You may f- you find a lot of people with potential. You find a lot of people with ambition but they never have the the courage to break boundaries and to break everything and to break generational cases as well 
mm-hmm. to see themselves going forward as 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 individuals and as young people. I think that's what we like. We like courage as well. Oh, so, so that's what you would uh, tell the viewers. They should read more. They should read, read more mm, and inform themselves. Mm-hmm. Yes, inform themselves about things. Um, how did the author effectively capture the complexity of the black experience? <laughs> like, how 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 did the author kind of like explain the the depth and how complex it actually is to oh, okay. to to I be black? Yes. Um, one thing I liked about his writing style, he talked about like different black people who 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 are now better people, who are now successful and who are some of them are known. So for him to talk about their experiences and like go deep within like each and everything they have been through, mm. the challenges they have faced as black people, it was all the common thing, like the disadvantage, you're not allowed to be in this place because you're black. You're not allowed to, to, to get education because you're black, you know. So those were the some of the challenges that they all faced. Mm-hmm. In, in this experience, mm-hmm. uh, this experience is in the book. Have you uh, uh, related with some of the, the stories that he tells? Uh, is there uh, some kind of relation that you found with uh, the people that the author speaks about? Like the experiences mm-hmm. have... You encountered those experiences? Not really, because I think I was not born into slavery, but I can, like, um, have things that I feel like they 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 kind of, like, got to, to me, such as, like, knowing as a young person that I'm able to do things, but I'm not doing them because I have the fear and I'm being discouraged, like, from day to day about things that I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that is a psychological slavery. So either ways, but now maybe they, they have they may have faced it like physically, but for me I feel like it was psychological because the fact that you, you are stuck with the mind that you're not doing enough or you are not good enough. Like as a young person, had it been I was informed at first that you can own a company at any age, mm-hmm. I would have been somewhere. I guess. <laughs> then after reading the book, I saw that like nothing, actually like nothing is just standing before you. You are the one who have to take the amends to break all the borders and just mm-hmm. break all the boundaries and just mm-hmm. go there, fly as high as possible and as high as you can because there's absolutely nothing that stands in your way. We We tend to be afraid of the people we are inside. The one who has ambition, the one who has potential, the one who has the courage to take on the world, and then then there's you who faces the the like economical problems and other things like other people as a well, who always defy you as a person. That when I can link it to them not always like being denied access to certain things. Mm-hmm. So that's that's how I think I can relate it to. Mm, yeah, and, and and I like the fact that you were talking about this uh, borders. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are borders that our parents, I feel like, mm-hmm. set for for us mm-hmm. uh, ourselves that also limits us. Mm. Uh, for example, I would make that I never felt like when when I used to uh, communicate with with. Uh, the other way okay i don't know how to put it where it's not mm-hmm. offensive or anything mm-hmm. uh but uh white mm-hmm. white the white race right mm-hmm. so i used to feel a lot inferior when when i was around them like it was mm-hmm. just uncomfortable mm-hmm. but i feel like that inferiority came from how my parents and portrayed them yeah portrayed mm-hmm. them and my grandma was like oh umlungu lela, mm-hmm. and he's you, you <laughs> hear what i mean mm-hmm. Like you, you. It's not really on your level, like they would say exactly. these days. Exactly. Interesting. Really. So this is more personal question. So we will we'll dive into a more personal, mm-hmm. like your experiences mm-hmm. and what you have faced. Mm-hmm. So the first question I want to ask: What aspects of the book stood out for you most, and why? The aspect that stood that stood for me the most. It's after everything he has talked about. 
from the setting from the time to to climax and the resolution it was the resolution part <laughs> how to stay on track as an african person so after all the reawakening the self consciousness the self discovery thing mm-hmm. how are you how are you going to stay on track like he made a clear demonstration on how important it is to get educated it's only me the actually it's it's me the court and the ball so the ball is in my court right. my court so i mean, i need to make sure i, I get as many dunks as possible wow yes. that that's a yeah. that's a good uh, statement <laughs> there <laughs> so the next question i want to ask you mm-hmm. is did, did the book mm-hmm. offer any unique perspectives or insights that you have encountered before okay so it i think it did so i didn't know that christianity firstly originated in africa and that africa is the oldest continent before other continents were discovered that also life began here as everything happened with how the history of christianity and it being a world religion because it's a world religion now because now as africans this this is like this is an african story ne yeah? and how everything like originated but go outside now on campus mm. ask someone who wait, how do you know about this mm-hmm. it came with the white people with the britain colonization what <laughs> the, that's what they'll give you that's the answer they'll give you mm. but then i know that's how i was before but now i tend to like evaluate things before i talk about them to other people so i didn't know that christian it was like originated from africa that's what i can just say. yeah and and i'm under the same perspective mm-hmm. of uh like religion was forced onto black people mm-hmm. and uh it it is not really something that originated mm-hmm. from uh Africa from Africa mm-hmm. yeah uh maybe i should also as well inform myself Girl, more we are rich. <laughs> <laughs> everything starts here exactly uh the next question that i want to ask you is what did you appreciate most about the book and was there anything that you felt you could improve okay what did i appreciate most about yes. the book i appreciate for like i appreciate the book to like reawaken my confidence and being proud of who i am as an african person mm. you see sometimes we get to a point where by like we we also want to change our english accent <laughs> do you know how proud nigerians are with their <laughs> <laughs> like with their accent and their english they are always unique they always stand out even in other places like we as south africans we have normalized to like let english or i'm not saying the bad thing to learn it's, it's actually good because it's it's a common language between us and like we can usually communicate using it mm. but but how they how we actually want to like change everything now to like forget that I'm Zulu. I'm also a victim of this. I'm, I'm I'm actually guilty even that I'm not, I, I don't know my mother's language much better than I know English. You both are. You see? <laughs> so that's the thing. Like it's something that I felt hurry. As an African, I feel like I need to be on track. I need to 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 take pride like to, to be confident in me being me. Me with being happy with the texture of my hair. me being happy with the color of my skin me being happy with the shape of my body and and just being me and not trying to be someone else so you see now people is the psychology in it now because mm-hmm. now people feel like there's a need there's there's an achievement in you looking like a white person or looking like this like having long hair and not embracing my my beautiful short hair that's mm-hmm. black that's curly you see mm-hmm. so i feel like that's one thing i appreciate about the book the information the confidence it has brought to me as an individual individual mm. well, you you talked about uh, social media which is really big it today it influences as well it influences a lot and i always see uh like our fellow black uh, mm-hmm. that we we kind of like the accent change like you said when mm-hmm. when i first arrived at gfs mm-hmm. and i started pe- speaking to 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 different in- individuals mm-hmm. like they always thought that i was 
a colored because mm. of my because mm. of my uh, skin color, mm. just because of the accent. Mm. Like I, I'm originally from the Northern Cape, so there's a lot of Afrikaans and mm. English. We don't speak a lot of Khasa mm. at all, mm. but I can hear it a lot. Mm. Uh, and it 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 is big, like you said. Like mm-hmm. you can even when you talk to someone, you can mm-hmm. e- even already put like or identify that person mm-hmm. with that with the accent that they have. That, this one. They are closer. They are closer. That's true. And and how they 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 they, they pronounce it because mm-hmm. I know in Sutu, like the D word is pronounced with the L and mm-hmm. yeah. So, so 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 accent is actually as well really important, like you said. It is really. Would you recommend this book to others, and also like who would you recommend it to? Mm-hmm. I would definitely recommend this book to to young people, to teenagers, mm. more specifically, because they can read a lot. They can mature into adults knowing who they are, like having equipment, even if they, they're still in the discovering phase of their lives, but they can, mm. like, they can get equipped in, find, in, in like, going on the right track and the right direction. So I can definitely recommend this book, like this one. Thank you very much for for reviewing this uh, book with me. It was a really engaging, and you also got me thinking a lot about <laughs> <laughs> about uh, uh, some of the topics that the author talks about mm-hmm. uh, in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like you to say goodbye to the viewers over there. I just wish especially to young people especially the university of free state students we we as a collective like we have the power to change the narrative for south africa we have the power to change the narrative for africa as well so if you take this and you see this interview um just find even if you're not gonna read this book but just find relative books or books about anything read equip yourself as you say there like research Find out things. Stop normalizing and adjusting to things that you you personally are going to be the one complaining about. So, thank you, thank you very much for watching this episode with us, and do stay tuned for more episodes in the future.